This is GCSE Optics in depth. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to master the questions on optics. That is making images from using lenses or mirrors. Other channels show you the content, but Gorilla Physics, I'm gonna teach you how to get the grade nine. So optics is all about making images. For example, with a camera like the one that I'm filming on right now. Basically, a camera has a lens and it has a sensor. This lens has to make an image on that image sensor there, and the camera just records that. That's really similar to our eyes. We have lenses at the front of our eyes, and we have a retina at the back. Now the retina and the camera sensor, they are a screen, and we have to produce a real image on those screens to be able to capture that image. So when we're talking about these ray diagrams, we're just talking about where a focused image is produced. Lenses act to focus light, and they focus light through what we call focal points. Optics is about the location of focused images. Where can we produce focused images? So on this lamp, I have a little arrow, and that arrow is our object. This wall is our screen. So I'm gonna use these camera lenses. Firstly, this is a 50 millimeter lens, which is not too important to you, but I just want you to see the size of image it produces. So there is a certain distance I need to have this lens to the screen to produce a focused image. Hopefully you can see that a focused image there. And you might be able to see that the arrow is upside down. So as a real image, it's diminished because it's smaller than the object and it's inverted. Now if I use the 135 millimeter, it might be quite a lot less bright, but you can hopefully see that it is a much larger image. It still is probably smaller than the object, but it's a much larger image than before. And you can actually see the arrow now really clearly there is indeed inverted. This lens is different to this lens or this lens because they have different focal lengths. This is a much longer focal length. This is 135. This is a 50 millimeter and this is just a 20 millimeter focal length. This one's a 135 millimeter lens. This is a 50 millimeter lens. The size of the image depends on the focal length of the lens and the position of the object. Depending on the lens we use, we're gonna get a different magnification of the image. I can change, for example, the magnification of this lens. The camera lenses are usually groups of more than one lens, but uh, they act as if they're just one lens. These A-level students are using a really simple demo with a big arrow taped on one of the windows and they're trying to make focused images on a screen. They're gonna measure the lengths between the window and the lens and the lens and the screen and hence work out the focal length of the lens. All this can be described and worked out by what we call ray diagrams. Optics is all about making images. So the first and most simple image that I can talk about is viewing an object in a mirror. And you will have some idea about this already because you'll know that objects viewed within a plane mirror, that is a perfectly flat mirror like your bathroom mirror, objects within that plane mirror, they appear to be the same distance within the space of the mirror as they are from the mirror. And this diagram I'm about to draw can explain why. So this is a mirror and we know it's a mirror, we know it's opaque because I'm shading in the back of it so light can't travel through this boundary. And this is a desktop lamp. Let's just say this is a lamp like any other. Light from that lamp travels to the mirror and you know that by the law of reflection that the angle of incidence is going to be equal to the angle of reflection. So here's one ray of light and I'm just gonna kind of judge this one by eye. And that is incidentally how we mark it. We judge them by eye. This angle in here would be the same as this angle in here. That's the law of reflection. But there's not just one ray of light coming from any object, there's more than one ray of light that is reflecting from this mirror and is going to be reflected off to us as we view it from over here. Let's just say this is like us, this is our eye over here that we're viewing this whole thing from. So here's my second ray of light. Now, where does this person interpret those rays of light as coming from? And think to themselves, oh, that's reflecting off a mirror, so it's behind me. Their mind actually just constructs an image of that object within the space of the mirror, where those rays appear to have originated from. Make sure you get your arrows the right way around on your rays. 
and we just need one arrow on any ray that we draw in GCSE physics. So we do what's called constructing those rays into the virtual space of the mirror. These aren't real rays, so we're going to call them imaginary rays, and we're gonna do them as dotted lines to distinguish them from the real rays on our diagram. Those rays appear to have come from this point. So this is our image, and that appears to be the same distance inside the mirror as our object was away from the mirror. Just check that. Good enough. <laughs> Good enough for a freehand drawing like this. And then this is also a good one for getting your head around some of the terminology that we're gonna be using throughout this topic of optics. This is the object. These are rays, and these are what we call real rays. This is the plane mirror, and we will be talking about images that are constructed not just by mirrors, but by lenses shortly. And plane just means flat, it means not curved. And if you think about like in a fun house with the funny mirrors, that is not producing an image which is faithful of the actual object. And this is the image. This diagram explains why the image of this lamp in this plane mirror is the same distance within the virtual space of the mirror. It's all because of this, the law of reflection. If you were anywhere at any point looking at that mirror and seeing that lamp reflected in it, that lamp would appear to be in the same place within the mirror. So that's like the location of the image. Now that image that's produced in a plane mirror is virtual. The definition that you can memorize of what a virtual image is, is an image that cannot be projected onto a screen. So if I was to put a screen there, then I would not get that image onto my screen. And that makes sense because that would be behind the mirror. If that was your bathroom, that would be like in the other room behind your mirror, for example. The light has not actually originated from this side. So we cannot put a screen there and get an image where that image appears to be. So we call that a virtual image. Now it's also the same size. So it's, it's not magnified or diminished. And another way to express that is you could say it had a magnification of one. It's the same size. It's also upright, okay, but it is horizontally flipped and we call that laterally inverted. So it is. So it is laterally inverted and you'll know that if you try and read a word in mirror, then you get mirror writing. Now you will not get a mark if you say a mirror image, okay, they won't allow that, okay, it's laterally inverted. In, they will probably credit you if you say something like flipped horizontally, but not just a mirror image. We do have types of mirrors that can produce writing that is the right way around. An example of a use of this is that police cars and ambulances actually have writing which is laterally inverted itself, so the driver can read them in their rear view mirror. So this is just an introduction to optics. We can use lenses to produce images. Now I'm gonna go through some more scale drawings of ray diagrams that you can use to work out the sizes and the type of image and indeed the orientation of images that are produced by lenses. If you haven't done refraction and the basic idea of lenses yet, then I suggest you go back and look at that before doing this section here. These are the two types of lens. Converging lens at the top there, that brings light together. It makes parallel beams of light converge. Diverging lenses have the action of diverging the light, so sending parallel beams of light away from each other. Now they'll never meet, but we use the near focal point, the focal point that would be behind the lens on this side, to actually align what direction those rays of light would go. The focal point of a lens is the point at which the rays of light would cross. Now a more powerful lens has a focal point which is closer to it. So if this lens was fatter, if it had a larger curvature, then that would be a more powerful lens and the focus would be closer to it. Similarly with the diverging lens, if it was more powerful, then it would have a greater curvature, so it would have much wider ends and much narrower middle. It is well worth you taking out a bit of paper and actually making these as I do them on the screen, because these are some really easy marks that you can pick up without much thinking at all in an exam, but if you don't know how to do them, then they're really hard marks to get. <laughs> I, if you know the trick, this is easy. So first of all, I'm going to do our simplest probably diagram. First of all, I'm gonna do a, probably our simplest ray diagram, which is a converging lens with an object at distance 2f. All ray diagrams start with an axis. I'm just gonna leave a little marker in the middle there of my axis that was at eight centimeters. 
this is what we call the principal axis of the lens. Now the lens I'm going to actually draw on this center point here. It does not matter how tall the lens is, that isn't part of the, the diagram. And we call it a converging lens, okay, this one. And we indicate that by doing an arrow outwards like this. Now lenses always have what we call focal distances. Now I'm going to say the focal distance of this lens in this diagram is three centimeters. And I'm gonna label that capital F. So this is the focal point and the distance from the lens to the focal point is what we call the focal distance. So this is going to have an object which is going to be at a distance 2f. So if the distance f is three centimeters, then this object is going to be six centimeters from the lens. Now I'm going to draw an object as a vertical arrow. It could be anything, it could be a tree, it could be a person, but we just indicate it as a vertical arrow to show that it has a top and it has a bottom, which is currently resting on this, the axis of the lens. This is the object. Now light from that object goes to this lens and is converged by it, and it's converged through the focal point. That's the key idea that you need to apply to solve this. But really doing these diagrams, and in an exam you'll get given something that starts just like this, doing these diagrams is just a simple of knowing a simple one, two, three, four, step-by-step -step method that I'm gonna go through with all of these four diagrams that I'm going to do. So firstly, we always do this. We always start with one ray of light from the top of the object to the middle of the lens. And just one arrow is totally enough to indicate that. There we are. Then we take that ray of light, and this is in the case of a converging lens, we refract that ray through the focal point here. This is our second ray. Now we always, and we, again, we always do this ray. We take an array from the top of our object through the optical center of the lens. There we are. So that is all of the rays of light, and indeed we've got a couple of marks in our exams already. So where those two rows cross is the top of our image. This is a really important point. Don't indicate that your image is there. This arrow starts from the axis and goes to the point where the rays meet. Now you are allowed a bit more of a tolerance than an average graph and you are allowed more than you know half a small square to be as accurate as you should be because these are quite tricky to do as accurately as that. So this is the image that is produced by our converging lens with an object which is at 2f distance from the lens. Now in just the same way as the image that was produced in the mirror, we can describe this image. We can call it a real image this time. Now the reason why that's a real image is because if I did put a screen there, I would get that image projected onto the screen. It's not upright though, is it? It's inverted. It's not laterally inverted this time, it's actually inverted. It's upside down, and you would get a mark for saying upside down. Now again though, this is not magnified or diminished. And you could say again, the image is the same size as the object. Now lastly, we could describe this last one with an actual value. We could talk about its magnification. Magnification is image height over object height. Now if I measure this object, which I can do with a graph paper, it's three centimeters. Now if I measure this image, which I can just do with a graph paper, it is three centimeters tall. And if I measure the object, it's also three centimeters tall. So the magnification, which is just like a scale factor in maths, that's the way to think about it, it's just a scale factor, is what? It's not magnified or diminished, so the image is one times the size of the object. That's not the case for all different ray diagrams. In exam questions, they will look like this. You just have to complete them and all you need to do is remember that simple one, two, three, four method. You always do a ray of light parallel to the axis. That's number one. Then you refract that ray of light through the focal point. Then step three, and you always do exactly the same all the way through the optical center of the lens. Now where those two lines cross, that is where the top of the image will be. The image produced matters what type of lens we're dealing with, so either a converging lens or a diverging lens. And it matters how far away the object is from that. And it also matters the focal length of that lens. So in this case, the focal length is from the center of the lens to the focal point. Here's two other examples. The step-by-step -step method is exactly the same, it's just the diagrams end up looking different. These are all of the four possible options they can really give you. 
let's practice them now. As I said, you're normally not going to have to do these from scratch. You won't have to draw the actual axis. What you'll have to do normally is to complete a ray diagram. So this time we've got an object which is further away from the lens than 2f. So this is the focal distance here, but the object is right over here. This is still a converging lens and you can tell that by the arrows. We always start every single ray diagram exactly the same way. We draw a ray from the top of the object parallel to the axis to the middle of the lens. That's the first one. We always do that. Then we refract that ray through the focus point. And again, we always just put one arrow onto our rays. We use this focal point, the far one, because this is a converging lens. Then we take one ray from the top of the object through the optical center of the lens, the very center of the lens. Now where those two lines cross, that is the top of the image. So the image isn't there, that is the top of the image. And we do our image with a dotted line so that we can see that it's not the object, it's just different from the object. And now we can describe that image. It is real because if we put a screen there, we would get a, an image produced on it. The simple test, the easiest way to test whether an image is real or virtual is to think, is it formed by real rays? There has to be real rays of light falling on a screen to have a real image. So this image is real. It is inverted, it is upside down still, uh, but it is diminished. Now we can use our little equation for magnification, which for short, M is HI, the height of the image, over H naught. So the height of the image is, say, seven millimeters. The height of the object, 17 millimeters. 0.41 is the magnification of that image. That image is 0.41 times the size of the object. It's just like a scale factor in maths. This next one is still with a converging lens, but the object is now within the focal length. We do exactly the same thing. We start with a ray parallel to the axis. Step one. We refract that through the focal point. Step two. Then step three, we take a ray from the top of the object and we take that all the way through the optical center of the lens. Now where those two rays meet is where the top of the image is gonna be. But hopefully you can see it they aren't going to meet. They certainly aren't going to meet on this side of the lens. So what we can do is a bit like in our mirror, we could project the rays backwards into the virtual space of the lens. And we do these rays dotted because they are not real. Where they cross, that is the top. So this one has a slight extra step there. You have to ask yourself, where are those uh, rays of light going to cross? Well, they're going to cross behind the lens. So let's describe this image. Well, it is upright. That was an easy mark to get. It's virtual. It's virtual because it's formed by imaginary rays. But the acid test, what you would do if you had this, is you'd work out where that image was in space. You'd pop a screen there, and you'd see you wouldn't get that image projected on the screen. That's the definition of real or virtual, is whether or not you get an image produced on a screen at that point. It's magnified though, isn't it? It's bigger than the object was. So we use our little shorthand, magnification is height of the image over height of the object. 39 millimeters, 16 millimeters, 2.4 to two significant figures. And it doesn't have a unit because it's a ratio, it's a fraction. Okay, so you just, it's a magnification. The image is 2.4 times the object. This is a special case of a converging lens, which is used as a magnifying glass. So when you take an object and you bring it within the focal distance of a lens, of a converging lens, you get a magnified virtual image. And that's a good use of it as a magnifying glass. The last type of ray diagram to do then is a diverging lens. And diverging lenses, we use arrows pointing inwards, not because that's what it does to the light, but because that is what the ends of the shape of a diverging lens would look like. A diverging lens is a concave lens. It caves in in the middle is the way to remember that. So, but you still do exactly the same thing. You still begin by drawing a ray, which is parallel to the axis from the top of the object. 
And again, these are just judged by eye, so you don't need to worry too much. If they give you graph paper, then use the lines on the graph paper, but you don't need to worry too much. But this time, that ray of light, that's our step one, we're happy with that, is not going through this focal point, but it's actually refracting outwards. Now, what direction does it refract outwards? So we'll use this focal point behind the lens to line up your ruler to work out where that ray of light goes. Now, if you were looking at that ray of light, it would have appeared to have come from that focal point there. So then you get your last mark, which is every single ray diagram. You always do this one third. You start a ray from the top of the object all the way through the optical center of the lens. Every single ray diagram has that exact same ray. That's because a ray through the center of a lens, the optical center of a lens, just keeps on going in the exact same direction, regardless of its shape. So that's that ray there. Then the step four is to figure out where do those rays meet? Where do those rays meet? They actually meet in this imaginary space on the same side of the lens as the object was. So we do a dotted line as an imaginary ray of where that ray appears to have come from. And the image is actually where those two rays meet. The top of the image is still where those two rays meet. But this time it's going to be a virtual image because if I put a screen there, I wouldn't have all these rays of light falling upon that point. So I would not get an image produced there. In fact, if I put a screen there, I block those rays of light. It is upright and you can see it is smaller than the object. The image is smaller than the object. So it is diminished. And we can calculate that scale factor. Magnification is height of the image over height of the object, which is four millimeters over 17 millimeters, which is 0.24. And we're also going to talk about correcting sight. I have short sight, which means that the lenses in my eye actually focus to light short of my retina. For somebody with long sight, the lenses in their eye actually focus behind the retina. That's too long for the retina. And the difference is that I can read things that are really close up, whereas somebody with long sight can see focused objects that are really far away. So objects that are far away for somebody with short sight, they seem blurred. And you can correct my vision using concave lenses. So these are my glasses, and they're actually thinner in the middle, the lenses in these glasses. I'm currently wearing contact lenses, so I don't need to wear them, but they're doing the exact same job. They're actually making the light focus further back so it focuses on the retina, so that it produces a focused image on that screen, that retina at the back of my eyes. So the camera works just by having a lens on the front, there's a sensor at the back there, and it's all in a light type box. And it's just the same as your eye, really. The lens focuses the light onto the retina. It produces a focused image on the retina, if you're lucky anyway. If you've got short sight, then the light focus is too short and doesn't fall focused on the retina. If you've got long sight, then the focus is going to be behind the retina. It's going to be too long. Short-sighted people can read things really close, but they can't read things in the distance. They have focused images of things really close, but they struggle to focus on things in the distance. Long-sighted people, they find it easy to focus on things in the distance and hard to focus things that are near to them. We can use diverging lenses to correct short sight, and that will actually make the light focus a little bit later and focus then on the retina. And we can use converging lenses to correct long sight, and that will make the light focus closer. If you like that, hit the like button and why not comment any questions you have in the comments box. Or just comment yes sir to let me know that you thought that was useful. Visit guerrillaphysics.com for all of my videos organised by topic.